Power list time. I don't want to edit my own horn, but last week I got them absolutely spot on. As you all noted. I worked the halfway point at this IPL, well, you know, near enough, and I think we need to look at some team maps. And what better time to have a look at them than when we're doing our power rankings? For those of you unaware, here are our team maps. We basically break each team down in the six main important parts of the game, and then we look at economy and average. This is not economy or average you're looking at, this is an overall ratio of the two. But basically, these are just a very good chance to look at where a team is doing well or not doing well. You'll see we have all the teams here. You know, you can just see all the teams. But if we actually just click through, you will be able to see that we have the averages. This is the overall ratio for each one of those things. The best way to show you all this is to pick a random team. So on the right is bowling, and you want your mark to be inside the green line on the right. On the left side is the batting, and you want your mark to be outside it. That's about all you really need to know. On the right, less is more, and on the left, more is better than less. It's worth also noting that the, usually the big peaks are not the economies or the runs per over, but the averages. That's only because you can actually have them as far more as peaks or valleys. For this power list, we've actually started to put all the teams in tiers, as there are a few teams that I actually found almost impossible to choose between. I've gone with five tiers altogether, which is perhaps being nicer to Delhi than I needed to be. And remember that these rankings are not a points table. They factor in things like strength of schedule, recent games, the close nature of some matchups, and how pretty each team's actual map looks. But remember, all my power rankings are completely accurate. So feel free to only comment with praise or something like, Jared, your maps are like flowers from angels. In fact, this one is very pretty. So on with the list. The Titans are a monster with the ball all the way through. Their middle overs only a, I don't know, tiny bit mediocre. But even then they have them in hand. And then they completely annihilate teams again at the end. With the bat, they are just killing everyone all the time, everywhere. They do not lose any wickets at all. And at a certain point, I believe that cannot last. If I was being picky, I think they could afford to score quicker up top. But as long as they don't lose many wickets and continue to slog wildly at the end, maybe it doesn't matter. It would be hard to suggest that they are not in a tier of their own right now. They are 6-2, and two, and one of those losses was a shock last ball one against KKR as well. Their next game is against Delhi, so they should be 7-2 very soon. From them, let's go over to the Royals. This is a good looking map. Bowling now pretty good all the way through. They could take more depth wickets, but their econ is great. They are pretty meh in the middle, but it's still not that bad. With the bat, they are starting really strong, but their middle is a tiny bit flabby. But they more than make up for that at the end. It's pretty tasty all the way through really, but they are probably the second best team around at the moment. But I would say that the Royals are in our second tier. In their overall records, I went really deep through all these next three teams and I couldn't really see that much separation between any of them. I even thought about swapping them with LSG at the last minute. But I still think I believe in the Royals and also I just couldn't make a decision. So over to LSG now, what we have here is a bowling team that struggled a bit up top and then pulls it back all the way through the innings. This is pretty decent. So their poor start never really slows them down that much. Their batting is just rocking and rolling all the way through the innings until they drop off a bit late at the end. So really, in the six sections of the game, there are only two that they are not kicking ass in. And as it turns out, those two aren't bothering them much at all, but that might be the difference between them being a good team and a great team. Let's continue and be super again. This is a bit freaky looking. Chennai are just getting absolutely boiled in the pan when they take the new ball. Economy averaged the whole enchilada. But for the rest of their bowling, they're really quite good. If they can crack the power play, they are a way better side. But it's probably their batting that you have noticed because of this weird looking batting average thing here I have in the power play. They're averaging 81 up top. I don't even know if this map actually shows you how remarkable it is. And unlike some of the others, they have maintained this good start all the way through. Outside the bowling power play, they are a better than average team everywhere you look. I really like this team on paper, or on map, or digitally, but they are only five and four. Looking at everything, they really should have more wins by now, but they have had a very tough schedule, with no games against Delhi Capitals, for instance. I kind of tried to find every reason I could to actually move them further up to number two or number three. I couldn't quite get that far because of their record, but there is a lot to like about the way they've been playing, even if they haven't had as many wins as they would wish for. 
All right, we've done the Super Kings. Let's have a look at RCB. And their map is, it looks a little bit like their plan that they had for the first, I don't know, 10 seasons or so of the IPL. Their bowlers have been incredible so far in the power play. This is a silly, silly record. The fact that they are running at a 500 ratio with this is a bit of a worry because you can't get a better start to their innings than they've been getting. But by the end of the innings, everyone is actually smashing them around a little bit, which is a bit of a concern. The wickets are kind of doing nothing for them. So what happens when the wickets stop? The batting is smashing the ball everywhere early on and in the middle, but conking out at the end with that shorter lineup. If you're an RCB fan, you probably didn't need a map to tell you that. Either way, they might actually be the best team when it comes to batting and bowling in the power play. And yet again, it's not doing anything for them. They mark the beginning of the third tier and the other team in that tier is the Punjab Kings. Yeah, this is a bit of a weird shape. I'm not gonna lie to you. You can see here that the problem is all bowling. On the face of it, they have a quality bowling troop, but they don't really take any wickets at all until the end of the innings. That allows teams to score above average against them pretty much all the way through. The interesting thing, of course, is they have Arshdeep and Rabada and Cummins and Alice. There's a lot of talent there. So I would assume that this might normalize a little bit. However, if you get the power play and you just look at their bowling in the middle, I'm not sure that is going to change. They had decided, as they did in the previous season, to kind of not take any wickets in the middle, and they are not taking any wickets in the middle. Batting-wise, this probably looks worse than it is. And that's because they lose a lot of wickets, but they actually still maintain a pretty good runs per over all the way through, even when they're losing them. But based on all of this, I can't really say that this is a team that looks like they should be in the finals at all. However, I could have them above RCB. In fact, I did kind of put them above RCB and then I moved them back down, then I put them up, then I moved them back down. But essentially, I think that tells you that they should just be in the same tier together and you could just flip a coin deciding which one you think should be on top. They do have a slightly better record than RCB, but maybe more importantly, they haven't played many poor teams yet. Though there's really not that much in it. And I'm just going with my gut at the moment that says RCB is a slightly better side. So let's go on to the Sunrises now. And as much as anything, I love the fact that they have turned their map into a lemon. And let's start with the pointy bits, shall we? Because they're so noticeable. They have taken very few wickets when bowling at the death, but they have lost very few wickets when batting at the death. As it currently stands, if you can bet on how many wickets are going to be at the death in a T20 game, the Sunrises is the game to go unders on that. Bowling, they are hanging in there all right, but is the batting that is causing problems here. Losing wickets and scoring slow all the way through to the death. And it's worth saying that not losing any wickets at the end hasn't actually helped their runs per over much at all. As far as tiers go, they're on a tier of their own. They're probably not pushing for finals like the two teams above them, and they're not an abject failure like the three teams below them. But in some ways, they have a foot in both of those camps. At number eight, and perhaps on record alone, unfair not to be in the Sunrisers tier, is the Mumbai Indians. But there is a reason why I haven't put them in that tier with the Sunrisers yet, or even in front of the Sunrisers, despite the fact that they do have that better record. It's because when they played the really good teams, they lost. And when they played the really poor teams, they won. Now, the irony of recording this just after they beat the Royals is a little bit funny, and perhaps maybe they're going to change but I still don't really trust this that much. But I suppose theoretically, they still have a chance of making the finals. But I just don't think there's enough poor teams for them to play to get that record. Most of their problems start with their bowling, where they take no wickets up the top at all. And because of that, teams score fast against them like all the way through the game. I think their batting is okay, but considering they don't really lose any wickets in the power play, you'd actually assume that they would be far better than this throughout the rest of the innings. They just don't really cash in on the advantage they're giving themselves. But Mumbai are still hanging in there. If you'd like to see a team that's not, let's have a look at KKR. This funny looking map of Australia, you can see there is not a single metric that suggests that this team can bowl. And considering some of the bowlers they have there, that's quite interesting. It's also looking more and more likely like Pat Cummins was not the problem here. Matching that up is their batting, which is also quite awful. Their batting average in the power play is about the worst handicap you can actually give yourself for every innings. They are just losing a bunch of wickets and then having to fight back over and over again. And I think the worst thing is actually the best thing if you're a KKR fan. It's the fact that the middle order and the lower order have actually done pretty well, all things considered. That basically means if they hadn't lost like a million wickets up top, they'd be in a far better position right now. But they have, so they're not. And then let's finish off with the Capitals. If for no other reason, then I can't wait to talk about this point down here. I do really do like how stupid this looks. This is what a bad team's map should look like. 
And if it didn't look this stupid, I probably would have already moved on from them. <laughs> Having said that, their bowling kind of holds up fine, right? Like all the way through the innings until the end where it all goes crazy. They've managed six wickets in 181 deliveries so far. That's why this looks like some sort of weird beak or something. Even then you would have to argue that their economy is held up okay. So it isn't their bowling that's the problem. It's the fact that this entire side here, their batting is terrible in each and every way. They don't make runs, they do it slowly, no one cares. This is really bad for Delhi, and I don't think we needed this beautiful map to tell you. Huge thanks to you all for being here for another one of my power lists, and I suppose another one of my team maps as well. Remember, rate, review, subscribe, press the bell icon, do all those sorts of things. And in the comments, you can say whatever you like, as long as you're saying, Jared, these maps are like flowers from angels.